Rick Arter here. Okay, I want to do a little note on overclocking. Okay, there's three things that I have learned in the last year and a half, pretty much, that I've been overclocking. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, year and a half, that ain't shit. Yeah, well, watch my other videos, I think I kind of know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I don't mean to brag. Anyway, three things that you must remember when you're overclocking, okay? This goes for pretty much any processor, but mainly for Intel's Core 2 Duo, shit like that, but I'm sure all the AMDs go for same shit like that. Anyway, number one, set as many things in BIOS as you possibly can. Voltages, um, clock speeds for things, um, disable your frequency, uh, speed spectrum, stuff like that that you don't need. Disable anything that you don't need. Um, go through every single page of your BIOS make sure that all your things are set correctly and uh, if you buy a computer that you got from somebody else clear CMOS reset all the stuff to default do it all over again um, it's also good to do that every once in a while or if something's messing up and you can't seem to figure out what it is go ahead and clear CMOS uh, bring everything back to default um, another thing is temperature if you're overclocking temperature is a very very big deal uh, number three is a very big deal too, but we'll go into that later. Anyway, so temperature. Now on Core 2 Duos, um, there's a thermal spec. I know AMD has the same thing, but basically that is a temperature you can go up to. Okay, I mean there is a throttling point that's even higher than that, but you don't want to go that high. Okay, especially because you're pushing the processor even harder than what it's supposed to be. Which, from what I've heard, Intel underclocks their CPUs as it is. So Basically, that's why we can do what we do with the processors and they live through it. Anyway, temperature. What you need to do is, all I've read and what I've always done is, on Core 2 Duos, keep your temperature under 60 degrees Celsius. Get out of here. Damn dog. Anyway, keep it under 60 degrees Celsius. Um, my MO stepping 2180 actually has a 73.2 degree limit, which I wouldn't go anywhere near 70, uh, at least not for like 24 7 runs. I mean, maybe for a benchmark or a stress test or something. If I had to, I guess for a couple hours, maybe, but I wouldn't really want to. Um, anyway, so Core 2 Duos and most AMDs, I think, is about 55 to 60 you want to keep it. The lower, the better. I mean, that's how it always is. I mean, I know you guys can say, oh, well, you said 60 and I'm at 55, so I have 5 degrees. If you can get the 5 degrees lower than that, if you can keep it at 50 at what you're at, I mean, no, the higher you overclock, the more voltage you're going to use, the hotter it's going to get. That's when better cooling systems come in and stuff like that. Anyway, that leads me into number three. Number three is the biggest deal, pretty much, because voltage will kill your parts faster than anything. Um, on Intel's, there is something called, I think it's a VID, which is your basic voltage that your processor is set to run at stock, and there's, processors are all different. Mine is 1.325. So, basically, 1.325 is the max voltage it should take, I guess, to run at your stock, you know, clock speeds, which, if you go to the Intel site as well, I guess AMD has something the same, I'm not really sure, but uh, if you go to the Intel site, they actually, if you look up your processor, they'll have a range that you can run, like I think mine's 0.8 uh, to 1.3 or something like that, or 1.35, but basically rule of thumb I've heard for voltage is do not run over 20% VID, which on mine that would give me like a... 1.475 or 4.6 something, I don't know, well, I've been pretty close to it, let's just say, but as far as what I've heard on uh, just voltage for overclocking that doesn't go by specs, um, 1.5 to 1.55 maximum CPU V core on air cooling. Um, better cooling, I mean, if you have water cooling, Peltier cooling, TEC, uh, liquid nitrogen, I mean, well, of course, that you can crank that shit up to whatever you want, but um, basically, a good rule of thumb is 1.55 to 1.6. Anything higher than 1.6, your processor and motherboard and other hardware might not last as long. Well, mainly just your motherboard, because if you're not pushing anything else very hard, it'll just be stressing all the transistors around the CPU and 
such things like that, I'm guessing. I'm not scientist people, I just know how to overclock, alright? <clears throat> anyway, that is about it. Uh, if anybody learned anything from this, um, or if anybody think I said anything wrong, leave me a comment or video response. Uh, I just wanted to do this just to throw some stuff out there for you guys. Um, be doing some more videos like this later. Uh, I just I love overclocking and I want more people to do it so that they realize that you don't have to spend so much money on parts just to get you know the extra benefit. I guess everybody has to have that I'm better than you kind of thing too. But I don't know if you look back at some of my older videos and stuff. I mean you can see what I've done and you can see how far I've gotten. And just as a side note, I found out the other day, I don't know if many people are going to believe this, but I s looked at the time for the Q6600 in a Super Pi 1M, and uh, my processor, pretty much fully overclocked above 3 gigahertz, will run a Super Pi time about the same as a stock quad core. So if that puts it in perspective, um, that's about it. Uh, I'm not going to ramble on any longer. I'm sure you guys are bored already, but... Alright, that's it. Thanks.